Hi, welcome to Rotten and Rebel. I'm really happy to be here with Linda, creative director of Armand Jane. And we are in the Armand Jane boutique in London. Right? So welcome, welcome. Thank yes, you. Thanks for coming over. <laughs> Thank coming you. All the way from Sweden. Yes. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, there are uh, a lot of fans out there who've been waiting for uh, me to take a closer look at some of your fragrances. So I would be happy and everyone out there would be happy to hear you uh, present, talk and present a bit more about some of your perfumes. That's very kind of you. So I would love to, uh, for you to just guide us through some of them. Okay, absolutely. So the Signature Collection was our original collection and we were very well known for our first perfume, which was called Ormond Woman. Mm. At the time, it was just called Ormond. Okay. But it stood out in the crowd because it was made with hemlock, mm. which is a poisonous wood that Socrates drinks and dies. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't call it, of course, hemlock because no one would buy it. So we called it Ormond Woman, and now we have Ormond Man. Mm. But it's a beautiful shipra. It's woody. It's green. You've got lovely notes of violets. Mm -hmm. It's like you know, galloping through a forest on horseback, Ooh. you know, with a black cape and, you know, going for some, you know, lovely rendezvous with somebody special. So it's, are these one of your best sellers? It is absolutely uh. one of our best sellers even today after uh. over 20 years in the industry. Okay. It's abstract, it's unusual, it's not anything, there's nothing else on the market that smells like it. We have a great big fan base, people mm. are still wearing it today. Some you know really big names in the world love to wear this perfume. It smells sort of green and woody to my nose. Yes, yeah, so you would say it's green or woody. Um, you've got the violets. The top note is grass and coriander. Mm. But I think the important aspect is that it's different. Mm. It's well made. It's got a lot of longevity. All the perfumes are poured at thirty percent, mm. so they've got a good silage. They last, and ultimately, more importantly. The next day, your clothes smell great, ah. so it doesn't dry down to some sickly, awful ah. formulation. We're very particular about the oils we use. Another perfume that's well worth mentioning as well is the Champaka. Mm -hmm. um, this again is abstract. Champaka is a little orange flower from India with Nerali bamboo, basmati rice and tea. Ooh. And again, this put us on the map somewhat in so much as it doesn't smell like any other perfume, but they're gorgeous mm. so it's not like they are unusual and you smell them and think oh that's a bit too unusual they're very well made i can get away with it that was yes nice. it's lovely and you've got a basmati molecule coming through and that that is a little bit nod towards the fact that it's a little flower from india mm. so i'd always Thank try you. to get um, the natural environment um, of the flower um, to 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 think about what other ingredients i'm going to use so mm. the champaka is with basmati rice and tea. Um, another one, let's say, for example, Taif. I do get, uh, you mentioned that this one was abstract. So is that sort of, um, would you say that it's a bit more discreet in a way? Yes. But it's still colorful, but in a discreet sort of way. Yeah, so, so the people that wear champaka tend to be um, people who are usually quite creative themselves. Mm. And it's, uh, the Champaka is also what I call the perfumer's perfume mm. because perfumers have always commented that mm -hmm. it's a very good perfume. Mm. Um, but like the Taif, this is a rose perfume. This is the first perfume in the world, again, using the Taif rose in a fine fragrance. When I say fine fragrance, what I mean is a fine fragrance is when you have a number of different ingredients, mm. 30, 40, 50, 60. So it's not an attar. Before, Taif Rose was just an attar, mm. one oil that you rubbed on your skin, maybe with some oud. Mm. But this is uh, in a fine fragrance. This is from Arabia. Mm. And again, I've used the natural environment uh, to, to, to bring up the formulation. So this is Taif Rose with date oil. Mm -hmm. Because when you go to Arabia, that's, that's what they give you when you arrive. You, you get a date drink and you get a box of dried dates. So for me, I always look to a country look to see which flower I want to pick and then I look at the environment of what is around and then mm. I bring that all in to put down my potential ingredients mm. to bring together the perfume so it makes sense and also very helpful for me mm. um, to have some sort of rhyme or reason into the rationale. Now I really enjoyed the Champaka one 
uh, and uh, I'm sort of curious because my nose is not nowhere near as sophisticated as yours, but there's some sort of a, and apologies in advance, but some sort of a, not oily, but sort of a, di not diesel either, but you in know In the one, champaka? No, this one. In the tai? Yeah. Well, I can give you more of the formulas. It's taif, rose, orange blossom, date, saffron, mm. um, pink pepper. Mm. But then you've also got some freesia. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of um, other floral notes. This was exciting. Yeah. I really enjoy it. It's, when gentlemen come into the boutique mm. and they want to buy their loved one perfume, they tend to buy taif. Mm. I think because they think you can't go wrong. It's very beautiful. And maybe they're thinking, this is what I want to smell when I have my arms around mm. my loved one. Okay. So, yeah. I'm curious, are, are, is it the men who make the decision or are there the women who tells the men when they're in the store oh, okay. that they, this is a nice <laughs> one for you? Well, this is like, well, this is all, first of all, all the perfumes are gender free. Mm. So when anybody comes in, they say, what's for men, what's for women? The only thing is like, almond woman, almond man. Mm. By the way, men wear the women's, women's wear the men, but the rest of the perfumes are all gender free. Mm. So we don't direct gentlemen or women to certain perfumes mm. and say, this is floral and this is, you know, oriental, this is more for, you know, for a gentleman. Yeah, that's good. It's, we're we're open-minded. And we just think, you know, try them all and see what suits best on your skin. Mm. And also, we like to also give samples. Or we let uh. people sit down and have a consultation to talk about their likes, dislikes, you know, uh, smells they like in the world, smells they absolutely hate, mm. you, know, you know. And you can learn a lot from a, 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 a client, a person, when, you know, when they tell me, you know, I love the smell of petrol. I love the smell of fresh bread. I love the sea. Mm. I love the mountains. The mountains excite me. These are my favorite colors, you know, and you learn a lot from, from just chatting. Mm. And, uh, and then I know then, not more or less, but I understand what's making them tick and that helps an awful lot. Mm. I really enjoy these two. I like that one as well. Thank but you. I think these two impressed me the most actually. And I think I'm leaning so far towards the champaka. Towards the champaka? Okay, well that's great. I'm not sure if I sort of follow the mainstream here where everyone likes champaka well, more got, than other ones. We've got something for everybody. You know, mm. we've got sweet resins from Peru if you like soft orientals. We've got beautiful Osmanthus frangipani, very well made if you like those white flowers, but mm. you want something white flowers with sophistication. So it's not like your 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 standard white flower perfumes we don't do standard mm. so so the signature collection is a really exceptional uh, collection of perfumes um, that I'm very proud of should we move uh, on to the next one we can do you want to have another one from the signature yes please okay yeah so another one to try which is okay I'm going to give you now a very good example of a well-made floral okay this one's quite good mm. so San Paquita this is the national flower of the Philippines mm -hmm. and this starts off with a fruit so the name of the flower is San Paquita, San Paquita. Wow. yeah okay. and it means I promise you Ooh. so it's quite nice for brides mm. and things like that but it's a nice romantic story behind that as well because it's actually um, from Sampak, from the Indian jasmine. Mm. But it, the, the plant was taken over to the Philippines and it started to grow well in the ah. Philippines and then the flower became bigger. But ah. botanically, Sampakita, Sampakita is related to, to, to Indian Sampak. Mm. So this is a fruity top note. The fruity top note dries off. So you've got white peaches and lychees. And then it, 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 it dries down to sort of like a very nice dusky mm. um, um, jasmine. But the idea, of course, for Ormond Jane is you know, when you when you uh, come into the boutique, it's like we want to offer something a bit different. So you know, say so we haven't got jasmine, we've got San Paquita. Mm. We haven't got cedarwood or sandalwood, we've got hemlock. So you know, this is all about creating perfumes uh, that gives people you know a new a new. So this one was uh, I like uh, I That's like the it. National Flower of the Philippines, San Paquita. Mm. This was one nice as well. So I'm curious, uh, you have at least two, no, three other collections. That's right. So how about we try one from each collection? Okay, so after the signature was complete and I was mm. very happy, I mean, there are one or two perfumes I'm still going to introduce that have been mm. missing from the library. So I'm going to be bringing in Oak Moss mm. very soon called Avernia. It's going to be 
think, an international bestseller. Wow. And I will probably bring in a musk and a patchouli at some point. Then I've really got a great selection of perfumes. Mm. The Four Corners of the Earth um, was a new project, um, and it was to bring together like London, because in, in London, you've got the four corners of the earth. When you walk around Primrose Hill in the morning, you have like 50, 60 Chinese people doing Tai Chi. Mm. You, when you go to Belgravia, you know, you have all the Russian people. When you go to Kensington, you have all the French people. So, um, you know, you just, for me, the four corners of the earth is, is like London. Mm. Everybody from all over the world is here and it's wonderful. Um, but they were, this is an expression of how I see each mm. country. So I've done India uh, with Nawab Avud. I've done Montebacco for South America, Qi, Qi mm. uh, for China and Tsarina for the Russians. The international bestseller, the mm -hmm. runaway success all over the world is Montebacco Intensivo, mm. which is tobacco leaf, amber, and leather, repeated mm. over and over again. Very soft, very sensual. This range is slightly more expensive in so much as, um, first of all, the project took about two and a half, three years. Wow. Secondly, it was um, looking for the very, very best ingredient that we can find. So when we looked for, when we had Madagascan vanilla, we had about 20 different samples of Madagascan vanilla from all different companies all over the world. And we were doing like the Pepsi challenge, mm. you know, doing like smelling one, smelling the other, smelling the one. And it took forever, but we just, you know, you smell one and you think, mm, that's lovely, that's lovely and smooth. And then you smell the next one and think, oh no, that's better. Mm. That's much better than that one. So you had this process of elimination. Uh. And ultimately, of course, I ended up with the most expensive ingredients ah. and everything, but it didn't really bother me. I was quite happy about that um, because I just think make the perfume and then we'll have to work, worry about the price later. And then, mm. you know, this Thank is Montebacco. It's the worldwide bestseller. It's from the Four Corners of the Earth collection. Mm. And like you guys know, I'm a tobacco freak. Uh, I do enjoy <laughs> this. This is really, but what I like about this one is if I compare it to some of my other tobacco, uh, this one is more subtle yes. and not intense when it comes yeah. to tobacco, which is really nice. Yeah. What's more? Uh, what's in it more than tobacco? Well, it's 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 not a huge long formula. Mm. Most of it is 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 tobacco flour. Ah, it and is. A lot, yeah, wow. and a lot of a lot of leather, uh, which is a, a molecule, mm. and a lot of amber, and then of course you've got some floral notes. But ultimately, um, that's also poured at forty two percent. Ah wow! Yeah, so okay. so it's a it's a much more um, higher intensity, ah. so it's long lasting, and I mean that's what we like to do. We have our own studios. Mm. We're making the perfumes in house, and so we can do what we want. Ah. And so, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's a privately owned company. We make the formulas. We take it to market when they're legalized and and accepted, and all the paperwork's correct. And then we just have to work out how much you know we need to charge to 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 make it viable. So this one was part of the four corners of the Earth collection. That's right. Yeah. And the name of it was is uh, Montebacco, but that Montebacco. particular one is Montebacco Intensivo. Intensivo. Now I'll give you another one to smell from that, which is also shows really uh, a lot about the um, company. So another perfume I'm really um, keen to introduce to you is uh, Nawa Bavud from the Four Corners collection because mm. this is a very good example of how we construct a perfume. Mm -hmm. If you hear about the ingredients on here, you would think, oh, it's going to be such a heavy perfume. It's got like pepper, patchouli, pimento, oud. But it's not heavy, it's complex. Mm. And the Orma Jane perfumes, all the ingredients come through one by one. It doesn't You don't just hit a brick wall. Mm. So have a, a smell of that and then you'll see what I mean. You get all the ingredients come through, it's quite complex. Yeah, it's it a very really interesting feels perfume, complex, but yeah. it's not a heavy, heavy perfume. Wow, this is exciting. Yes, it's lovely, isn't it? It's great. I'm very proud of this one. So, too. what are. Um, Pepper, the... patchouli, pimento, oud, you know, just. Wow. It's, it's, it's... Another thing is that um, recently uh, we've changed the word oriental to uh, amberesque mm -hmm. because. Um, it's been pointed out that Oriental is referring to a type of person which mm. has got nothing to do with, with smell. Mm. This is something that's just come about literally in the last two or three weeks. Mm. And I think I can agree with that. 
So um, the perfume industry, the critics were saying, change oriental to amber, ambery, mm. which I just thought, but that's fine, but I don't really like that mm. too much. So I have changed my website and I've changed all my copy. So whenever we refer to oriental now, we say amberesque. 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 Ah, okay, I like um, it. So this is a spicy amberesque, mm. whereas before it was a spicy oriental. Mm. Um, so so it's just how we live now, and you've got to stay up to date, haven't you? Mm, yeah. So 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 this is what we, we another change in the company, constantly innovating, constantly you know keeping on top of things. I like it. But it's a lovely perfume, isn't it? I love it, and it's it's it's, it's a really, as she says, it's truly complex, uh, but still feels very approachable. Yeah, very approachable. Uh, so that was beautiful. So that's the four corners of mm. the earth. Then we've got um, this collection down here in the dark bottles, and that's mm. called the Elixir. That is um, another. It's just giving our clients choice because this is all based on the signature collection. So ah. we have a lot of people that come in and they say. I like this perfume, could I have it a lot stronger, like an ah. extract? So we, we used to provide this service called uh, Made to Measure. They could pick any perfume they want. Then we'd mm. go downstairs and pour it at a higher level for them. It, they just have to wait about 10 minutes, but mm. it's, you know, we've got a little tiny thing downstairs, it's fine. And um, then afterwards, we just decided to make something of it. So when people come, this is not to replace the signature. Like some people love the Osmanthus at 25, 30%. Some people want it at 45%. Mm. So it's choice. It's okay. what you like. Some people don't want a heavy perfume. They say this is really more than enough. And other people say, I want more. So the elixir is basically these, but, but intensified? Or... They're more intensified, except we've also, in two of the perfumes, we've add Cambodian oud. Mm -hmm. And Cambodian oud is the most expensive oud. Mm. It's over 20,000 pounds for one Torah, which mm. is about this much. Wow. Um, we have ours tested before we pay the yeah. uh, invoice, to have it tested for purity, um, because a lot of people are cutting uh, yeah. their oud these days. And so we have taken the Ormond, the signature, and the Taif, and we've put, um, I think it's 1.5% Cambodian oud in it. Mm -hmm. Personally, these are not perfumes I would wear. Mm. Only, no, I would wear it from the signature. Mm. And the only reason why I don't is because um, I've, I find the pure Cambodian oud too, too strong for me, too mm. pungent. What I have in Ormond Man and what I have in other is a different oud. The Cambodian oud is one of those that really, you know, but this is basically the elixir version of the one I tried the Taif here. Yeah. So this is going to be really yeah, interesting right. exactly. to see. Yeah, 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 right. So this is Taif, as you know it. Mm. And this is with 1.5% Cambodian oud. Mm. So how come you chose to add oud? Because um, a lot of my clients who come in, they used to say to me, um, I love buying your Taif uh, rose perfume. And then I mix it with my, with my uh. Uh, attar of oud because I love that combination. Mm. So I'm just responding to what the clients uh, are asking okay. for. We have clients that really, you know, like want a strong perfume, then we have ones who don't. Mm. So we've got something for everybody and we can make the perfume according to what you want. Mm. So it's a nice service really. Mm. It's giving, you know, a bit more of a retail experience. Mm. And you can do it online as well, by the way. I am going to agree with you. Yeah, I would actually, I love the, the signature Taif, yeah. line, uh, Taif. This one still beautiful, but I think the oud takes over in a yeah, way it, that uh, it's 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 for the people. That... The oud lover is gonna love it. So I have uh, 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 members of staff mm. that adore this mm. much more than the other than ah. the Taif, and then I have staff that say, I prefer the Taif. Then they go, No, I prefer ah. the Elixir Taif. So it's you know. Yeah, blessed, we all have different blessed, noses. Blessed yeah. that that we're all different, yeah. which is good. So. I, I don't feel I can carry that off. Uh, and okay. I, I prefer to have something uh, a little bit more, I can smell the flowers coming through. Uh, this was interesting. Yes, so what yeah. are these beautiful bottles over here? So this is the Route de la Soie, the Silk Road. Mm. And the idea behind this was to, to, to for a younger audience, it was, um, well, it, the inspiration came from a book that uh, my husband bought for me called The Silk Road, which was by Peter Frankofan. Very interesting, great education about what came on the Silk Road out of China, right across these routes into Europe, 
gunpowder, mathematics, silkworms, and uh, I was fascinated. And then I bought another book um, called The Silk Road Flowers. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, I, you know, I was reading all through that, and then I wrote down all the ingredients, and then I, I tried to make sense of it all. A lot of the ingredients were quite standard ingredients, so a big departure from our signature, a mm. big departure from our philosophy, but it had ingredients like pear, apple, rhubarb, blackcurrant, rum. So I just thought, well, this is, you know, it, it, it's quite exciting. And we thought this is a good way to introduce a younger generation mm. into the brand. It's still niche, it's still very well made. I went to grass for about four or five days, I was there big long list of ingredients. I went to a company called Expressions de Parfumé who are particularly good um, at fruit oils. Mm. And I just sat down with them, talked it all the way through. Then we did a little map of how to split it all up to each each part of each country. And then, and then that's called the Silk Road. It's done extremely well. It's brought us actually into the Chinese and South Korean market mm. because they absolutely loved it. It's great for younger people who don't really know about the niche perfume mm. industry. It's a great introduction. It's got a lot more sort of fresh vitality to it. Um, and I, I think it's important to have something for everybody. You know, you don't so just... So you mentioned rum. Oh yes, rum. So Is the it rum... boozy because I no, love... No, no. I love... <laughs> oh, it's not. Okay. No, it's, it's not boozy. So this one is the bestseller, actually. Mm. This is the one that says the runaway success. I didn't even expect it to be the big success, mm. but it really is. It's made with peonies and it keeps selling out everywhere in mm. Russia, mm -hmm. Selfridges, Harrods, running out, running out, running out. Mm. And people just, they, I think it's like, um, I mean, everybody loves a peony. It's the most beautiful flower. You know, if somebody gives you a bunch of pale pink peonies, you know, you're going to be thrilled. Mm. Um, but what's particularly good about this, it's like, a bottle of happiness mm. and I think in lockdown when this was launched people felt that they were smelling a bottle of happiness and it made them feel good and made them you know feel that they had a it, it brought some some something lovely this them. might actually be my previous bottle of happiness was um, Atelier Cologne's orange sanguine okay. have you tried it no it's uh, like a big burst of Freshly squeezed um, blood orange. Oh, lovely. lovely. With a sort of a hint of sandalwood and a bit of vanilla at the base. Oh, lovely. So really yes. fresh. Yeah. Um, but this one is... I get the happiness and it's perfect. This yes. this really makes me smile. Yeah. Uh, beautiful one. So this is another perfume from the Route de la Soie collection, Tangier, mm. as in coming from Tangiers, where you get the tangerines, oranges. So this is like a... now. The whole of the Route de la Soie um, series uh, was launched right in the middle of lockdown. Mm. So I literally did every single uh, uh, promotion via Zoom, mm -hmm. uh, which was unusual for me. And um, it, was, it was interesting, but when we finished all these perfumes, I said to all um, the staff at the studio where they're all bottling and mixing, um, I said, you can all pick a bottle of perfume you know, to take home. And a lot of them picked this one mm. because they just thought, well, we're not going anywhere. We can't go on holiday. But if I was going on holiday, I would wear this. Mm. So if I can't go on holiday, the holiday has to come to me. So they all took a bottle of Tangier's home because it smelt of like oranges ah. and tangerines and, and things like that. So, so that's... Um, and when you spray it on, I just knew I would love it because this one, is, this one also feels a bit more potent. Yeah. I mean, that... that They've all got obviously supporting acts in them to 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 you know, come out and, and, and sing, but um, the, wow, the this gen. is a bit. There's a bit of warmth. At least that's how yeah, I sort yeah. of interpret it. Yeah. Really beautiful. Thank you. Love that one. That one and the previous one was Levant. beautiful. Yeah. So oh, that's right. So the Levant is that part of the world where. Uh, you come out of Iraq and Iran mm -hmm. into the Lebanon mm. and that whole um, eastern side of the Mediterranean is called the Levant, which mm. means rising. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, it's a very beautiful historic area. I love traveling. I know mm. you love traveling. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, can't wait for the day to yeah. come that, you know, we can put on our little backpacks and kaftans and walk around the souks again yeah. and, you know, smelling everything and just feeling you know fantastic and special yeah 
And especially for you, I guess, because you, I'm gonna guess that you pick inspiration from scents that you pick up when you go on travels or whatever. Mainly that's the whole idea because um, I've been known for my travels, mm. you know, bringing back um, a sort of a oud um, into the European market, Taif, these are all from my travels, Shampaka going to India. Um, so travel plays a big part mm. and a lot of the collections you can tell, you know, four corners of mm. the earth is about areas of the world. Um, Route de la Soie, again, is the Silk Road. So yes, inspired by a lot of travel, but also um, I can actually be inspired by anything. I've got mm. a very keen sense of aesthetics. Mm. I like, I, I know what I like. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a real, somebody that's always, you know, in my garden, gardening, I'm always pruning my flowers. I'm, I love cooking. I love cooking with aromatic. Mm. I have a part on my website on Ormond Jane, it says Gourmand Jane. Oh. And um, you'll see me cooking with ah, fragrances okay. and, and flavors. Ah. Um, so, so you know, it all, for me, that's all, I don't know, I love, I just love eating, I love cooking, I love traveling. Mm. Like everybody else, I suppose, we lo I love flowers, I love gardens, I, I love watching things grow, mm. you know, and um, I'm... So I'm curious, uh, so I absolutely love, I love, I, I believe that I enjoy most kind of notes. Uh, there are maybe a few that I dislike, but most, and I do have every kind of perfume type. Mm. Powdery ones, flowery yes. ones, tobacco, leather, everything. But for some reason, whenever I come across anything with leather or tobacco, you love uh, it. I love it. Yes. So I'm curious. If I say that to you, was it, and you would recommend something from your collection, from any collection? From any collection. Was it the one that I tried with the tobacco, or do you have For anything? me personally? No, that would, oh, that you you? Think, yeah. Oh, so do well, you have anything with leather, for example? Yes. No, you I do. would definitely, I, I was thinking the Mont Tobacco in uh, that was for it. you. Uh, okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And if someone, I knew, do know that a lot of people can't actually get to a physical store to try out. Uh, your perfumes or any perfumes yeah uh, if they would blind buy something what would you recommend them uh, like let's say if you would pick something that you feel most of your female visitors usually enjoy and the same for men well um, you can't go wrong with Osmanthus frangipani type because they're very very beautiful perfumes really ah. really well melt okay. made but you don't have to blind buy because um, we do a discovery lab mm. and it's two mil samples. There's a box of seven. Ah. So from the signature, um, we do a box of seven from the four corners. Ah. So so you can just um, not, because it's a big investment. Mm. And then you've got, you know, our bottles are 120 milliliters. Mm. So they're bigger than the 100 mils. Mm. So, you know, and then we have the 50 ml. Um, but I think it's important that you, you perhaps invest first in some samples. Yeah. And take your time and the best time to smell a perfume is like when you wake up in the morning um before you've had your breakfast before you've had your coffee mm. um you just like sort of sp have a shower and then spray a perfume on your wrists and let it settle and then maybe just open the window or go outside and smell it mm. and then take that two mil sample with you all day long keep topping it up and then see how you, you like the smell the next day on mm. your clothes then you can make a more informed decision you know and then you make some notes and take your time because it's how you're going to scent your body, and you know. So you, and and you know it it it's a nice experience anyway. Mm. It's good fun, you know. So that was excellent advice. So you do have a discovery set that uh, yeah. you guys can try out, and I love. That's the first time I hear your recommendation on when to try and how to try um, a perfume properly oh, before yeah. you make a decision. I love yeah. that. So, uh, or do you have any new perfumes on the horizon? If so, what or which? I do have one and it's Ooh. spectacular. It's called Evernia. Mm. That is Latin mm. for oak moss. Ooh. And oak moss is a classic perfume from the 50s, 60s, 70s. And then it sort of all but disappeared. Had a few problems with IFRA rules and regulations. And now it's come back. I got a sample about two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, okay, I'm definitely working with this. Um, I think it's the epitome of the Ormond Jane house. Mm -hmm. The oak, oak moss is quite, a, it grows at the bottom of trees. It's quite a dirty um, moss. Mm. That, then it gets sent to France. It's cleaned and cleaned and cleaned. And then, 
you get this beautiful, um, beautiful, beautiful classic smell. And I get a whiff of it and it smells amazing. Yeah, I, I'm predicting a good seller. I think it might even be a best seller. Wow. It's got a lot of flowers in it. So if you if you saw the ingredient list on, on the website, you will think it's going to be floral, but it's it's all coming together mm. and very, very well. So it's got um, iso e super in it, which is a molecule that creates um, the cedar wood, which is, you know, you, you've got the oak mosses is growing around mm. um, these type of trees. And you've got cashmere that is um, another molecule that is it makes it take, makes it soft. Mm. So so, yeah, it's a classic perfume. I'm thinking of myrrh, but different. But is that wrong of me? You're thinking of there's no myrrh in it. There's but no. um, but is there any similarities? Or is it just my nose that is. I think you can smell something mossy. Ah, mossy. Yeah. Okay. I like it. Yeah. It smells different. Yeah. Uh, it smells mag magnificent. And the name is Avernia. Avernia, which is Latin for oak moss. And it's going to be released on the 12th of September. 12th of the September. So make sure you guys yeah. don't miss out. And that's going to be available on your website. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And they can buy samples so they don't have to make a big investment. Mm. So you know, they can just take their time and. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, that was a short tour for you, or you guys. Uh, I had an absolute blast. I think you have created some stunning, stunning perfumes. Uh, and I do, I'm 100% sure that there's something in, in all of this for all of you guys out there, regardless of how your tastes are and all that stuff. So please do make sure to head on over to Armand Jane's website. Uh, find the ones you like or try the discovery set and please do make sure you try it as per uh, her recommendations and you are most likely going to find something that you absolutely fall in love with. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, and that was it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye-bye.